What's going on this week in Nerf? Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. I'm Adriana, and this week we finally get to talk about something I've been wanting to forever. But first, other stuff. Foam Fest is a convention in the UK, sort of all about nerfy sports and blasters and playing and fun. And unfortunately, they had to cancel their event last year. But good news, a new data set for April 10th, 2021. Finally, something to be able to look forward to. Uh, that's far enough in the future that it, I might actually feel comfortable getting in a plane and flying across the ocean. And I am really, really, really looking forward to this event. It'll be in the UWE Sports Hall in Bristol in the UK. And it's just a huge meetup for the Brit Nerf community. It includes a convention and a couple of games throughout the weekend. And what's really cool is the online version that happened this year raised over 5,000 pounds for charity. That is awesome. I'm hoping that the next event in person can do even better. That would be so cool. Um, details for the event uh, as they are released will be at the link in the description. Dart Zone recently filed another trademark application for another blaster in the Pro line, the Conquest Pro. And it's just a name at this point, but it is so exciting that there's more coming in this line. The Nexus was great. I think the Aeon will be great. Other people say it is. I haven't used it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's just really exciting. Um, the trademark covers toy dart launchers, and that's, that's all we know. <laughs> but Conquest Pro is a pretty awesome name. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think it's referring to, because there's not a lot to go on here. <laughs> And there are even more products coming from Worker, and this time they're all glowy. So there's now a glow-in-the-dark Talon. It's the standard 15 round, but this time in a semi-transparent glow green. And to go with that, glow-in-the-dark darts. That's pretty darn cool. Uh, tracers like this for night games seem like just so much fun. Uh, I am very much looking forward to trying that. But at night, how do you charge them up? It's dark. Well, you use this UV light that attaches via Picatinny. Uh, I'm not as, I'm not visually a fan of this. The, the battery box looks pretty bulbous and it's strange they didn't have a sleeker way of routing the wires, but I'm sure we as modders can find a better approach to this particular problem because tracer glow rounds sounds just too cool to pass up. A majority stake of the UK supermarket Asda was purchased from Walmart. So that means that the future of Walmart's vanity brand, Adventure Force, in the UK is a little bit uncertain now. Uh, Dart Zone and Busby both make blasters underneath the Adventure Force brand. So that kind of already had spotty availability to begin with. So the future being even more uncertain is a bit sad. So will Adventure Force still be on shelves? Because Walmart does still own a small, uh, smaller part of the company. Uh, will the blasters be allowed to release under their own branding? Will the blasters disappear altogether? <laughs> uh, we don't know these things yet, but I am looking forward to finding out and I'm hoping that it will somehow increase blaster availability. Crossing my fingers for that anyway. <laughs> There have been a couple of semi-interesting uh, releases and leaks from Hasbro this week. Uh, so continuing with the Ghostbusters refresh, this is the Stay Puffed Popper. It looks like it shoots the little foam marshmallow man heads, which are kind of cute. <laughs> it comes with three of them. It's a hamp blaster with a pump grip instead of the uh, stick thing like the, the other Ghostbuster blaster. Uh, kind of neat. I, I guess. I think that some people will enjoy it for just the, the novelty of the different kind of ammo. And I'm hoping that the uh, Vintage Popper remake is compatible with the ammo from this, so at least they can share something. Crossing fingers for that. And Hasbro is repainting previous blasters to cash in on the Mandalorian show's popularity. 
So this is the Imperial Death Trooper Deluxe Blaster. And it's just a recolor of the Rogue One Death Trooper Deluxe Blaster. Uh, it probably has the exact same lights and sounds as the original and looks identical other than the color. It shoots three darts with a smart AR. And on the packaging on the back of that, uh, we got a look at the Mandalorian Blaster, which is a sharp fire with no stock, just a different color. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a shame that there's so little care taken for a franchise that's as cool as Star Wars is. And in Fortnite land, there is another version of the SMG. This is the legendary yellow. Uh, in this bright color, at least it really pops, but it's the same strife-like blaster that we've seen previously. Um, but hey, yellow. And now it's time for the Lynx Harp! I've had my beta version of the Lynx for almost a year now, and Lynx 2.0 is finally available. Uh, after several months of me and a handful of other people constantly harassing Dan from Orion Blasters about when's it coming out, when's it coming out? Um, but the reason it's taken this long is because there has been so much tweaking and testing and changing that it's almost a completely different blaster from the one that I built. It's pretty crazy how much has changed. He's even modified the different files for different slicers and printers so we can get the correct hole size uh, for the people he has distributing for him. And it, it's, it's, it's so good and the tolerances are so important on this thing. And it's clear that so much love went into the, uh, the the new version of this blaster. But the time is now. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about the blaster itself. It's a really compact bullpup springer. It's super comfortable to hold. I mean, obviously better when there's an actual grip here. Uh, the 2.0 version doesn't have the uh, Magpul furniture. It has a printed grip, but I'm sure it still is just as comfortable. I know Dan is uh, really, really finicky about comfort, and it definitely shows in how easy it is to deal with this thing. It has completely toolless takedown. There is a pin in the front, a pin in the back. You take those out, and the whole thing essentially slides apart. And you can dismantle it and put it back together in under five minutes. I know that because I watched Dan do it on my kitchen table, and it was surprising because I didn't know that was coming. Um, a pretty cool feature about it is that there's no need to uh, do a half prime to load and unload blasters. The ram is so skinny it fits in between the magazine lips, so you just swoop, swoop, and there's no need to, to pull back the prime at all. Um, it does have a floating catch, which means that there's no deep priming, but you can slam fire, and that is awesome. Uh, the new ones get approximately Talonclaw performance, and it does accept Talonclaw or Longshot style springs. And you can also modify it with different files that he has to accept full length springs if you want to pull even more power out of it. So, where do you get one? Well, they're actually sold out right now. They came out on Monday and they sold out very, very shortly after, but they will be restocked on Friday. So. Uh, Orionblasters.com is where you can find the hardware kit for the Lynx, and that'll be $64. And the files are available for free on the same website. Now, if you don't have a printer, blasters and just the prints, if you want, are available from silverfoxindustries.shop. They have great service, beautiful prints, highly recommend. Uh, they both sold out <laughs> super quick, uh, but the hardware will restock on Friday. So follow both of their social media accounts to get yours before it ends up getting swept out again, because this is a really cool platform, and I think that everybody should have one. And now it's time for the mod of the week. And this week it comes from Mustang77 with this mag holder stock attachment. This thing is really freaking cool. It's extendable, which is kind of unusual for hobby-made stocks. Most people put them in uh, one long chunk. Um, but at least this comes in small enough parts that it should fit on anybody's printer, really. Uh, and even cooler than that, it loads darts. 
How cool is that? Uh, so it doesn't push the darts down through the lips. It replicates how we would load a mag with our hands where you push the darts down, slide the dart in and lift up. You do the same thing with the lever bit on the, on the top, the cheek rest of the stock. And this is perfect uh, for players like me who hate gear and play conservatively. So you can easily scavenge on the go and then you have a mag ready when you need it and you don't have to have like 10 all over your body. Uh, and what's really, really cool and super nice is he posted the files uh, on Etsy with a modest $8 price tag, which is well worth it in my opinion. This is excellent work. The paint on it is beautiful. I was really confused about the fact that it was a 3D printed, um, a 3D printed product for, for a minute, because uh, usually paint on 3D print doesn't look that good. But this is excellent, and thank you so much for sharing. And sharing with the community via your files. It's awesome. You're great. That's all the news that I have for you this week, but I do want to make a quick announcement before everybody goes away. Uh, I have decided that I don't want to use Facebook anymore. It's been making me very, very sad. So unfortunately, a side effect of that is that I will miss stories from smaller creators, from smaller pages uh, that less people see. So I'm asking for your help. <laughs> Uh, to help me and my mental health and finding and still being able to, to give you uh, all of the all the updates, all the interesting stories on everything that's going on in the Nerf world. Uh, you can submit stories to me. Uh, we have a Nerf News channel in the History of Nerf Modding Discord, and a link to that will be in the description. Uh, you can send me a message on Instagram because I do enjoy scrolling through Instagram and it makes me more happy than sad. Uh, that's at foamblastshop, or you can email me, adriana at foamblastshop.com, uh, and I'll put all of that information in the description as well. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to miss stories, but just scrolling through Facebook makes me so, so sad, and I can't deal with that anymore. Uh, so if you do something that you think is newsworthy, or if you see something you think is newsworthy, please, please, please let me know, because I really do want to still be able to see all of these things and then share them with everyone. So if you guys could help me out, that would be hugely appreciated. Uh, and how do you segue to the actual outro? Uh, like, subscribe, and comment. And don't forget to look at the description for how to tell me about the news so I can tell everyone else about the news. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs>